so we have to stop playing with that. So <laughs> welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is January 23rd, and we are trying to get to an update. We've had some technical difficulties here. Thank you all for hanging in there. Um, um, so if it feels like we're rushing, we should just slow down and relax and actually do this again, right? Um, Monica um, Hardy has been working on... Um, She's <laughs> very cute, Kelsey. Um, an experiment. Uh, you know. Loveland, <laughs> Loveland, Colorado. Okay, guys, stop playing. Monica, <laughs> do you want to do, do introductions one more time, and then we can get started. Here. And do a, a reflection, a sort of a check-in and update on um, what's been going on with uh, the B. U House, the B uh, Lab, however you want to describe it. Go ahead. Welcome, Monica, again. <laughs> Monica, can you hear us? Okay, so now I'm getting a sign that my connection is apparent. I'm We're talking. Good. We <laughs> have you. Me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting these signs that I've got slow connection, so. Um, okay, great. Hello, Monica, here with my friends. We're talking about a quiet revolution, and join us. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> do you want everyone introduced again? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Been working with kids um, to redefine public education. We really feel like there's really cool things happening everywhere. The only problem is it's not equitable. So we feel like if we actually go after a policy and change public education to not be about seat time and about uh oh everybody froze. <laughs> Okay, I guess Google. So, friends here. Can you still hear me? Yes, you did freeze for a little bit, okay. but go ahead. So, friends here that have helped along the way. I'm so glad you're here. Christian's here to share. Um, it's an old site that we've had for a while. Gregory was a part of that um, about maybe three years ago. Um, Nikhil has suggested that we make it a little more friendly so we're kind of coming out with hopefully sharing some of the insight that we've gained over the years not that it's anything special it's just what helped us to come up with this idea that perhaps we need to scale the individual rather than trying to scale any really cool innovation so the site and then the latest version of the BU book which we think is the final online version um, and we're going to work on a even shorter printout version. So great! So it's great to be able to check in. How about with that? Best site. You want to jump in? Yes. Screen share. <laughs> so, okay. So wait, I jump in? Yes. Go for it. Introduce okay. yourself a little bit. Okay. So hi, my name is Christian Buendia, and um, I'm part of the the B. I guess is, I don't know what you guys refer to them as. But yeah, I'm like a part of the, the B U Lab, and I don't know we're the group that we're trying to redefine public education. And um, so she talked about how like this has been like a four-year plan, kind of, and like we've uh, we've reached a point where we finally are 100 percent sure that we are not crazy and what we're doing is not crazy and what we are doing is actually like what we're doing right now is crazy like uh, not doing what we're thinking about I don't know I just like put around in circles but yeah uh, so like that made sense Christian keep going yeah staying in the same place is crazy so um, so we have this website that let me try to screen share with you guys right quick. Um, yeah, so like uh, so this website is like a collection of all of like the things that we've been uh, 
like all the things that we've learned, all the things that we've all the things that we've like gone through at these whole four years we so we put right here and I guess so I just want to say it's at redefineschool.com right yeah redefineschool.com and um uh, before 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 anything I want to say that this like website um it really isn't anything like it, it isn't anything like it's not a map that you guys are gonna follow like I really don't think this is a website for kids even really like because kids understand that like I feel like kids understand it a little bit more that we need this and like like they don't they're not really they're not really for public education they they want to change it but I really think that everybody needs it but like this is just like all like it I, I don't know how to explain it but this is like Everything, everything that we've come through, everything that we've gathered, it's just kind of like a Wikipedia of all of our research and process and everything we've done. So right here in the beginning, as, as we get into Redefined School, it tells you what we want to do. So what we're seeking, and like, it's literally to redefine public education, and it's like, what we just want like two things is to everybody to be known by somebody and everybody talk to themselves daily so like by being known by somebody we mean like having an attachment a relationship where there's like actual trust like uh, a, a relationship where you like have somebody there for you I don't know it's like a community kind of thing where everybody's like we're all just a happy family I guess and then Two is that every like talk to yourself. What is it that matters to you? Find figure out what matters to you, and you go do it, and you know, rule the world. Um, and yeah, right here we have like redefine and public and like the actual definition of it. And yeah, okay, so that's the that's when you first get to the website. And right here we have. So Christian, can I ask, do you, at, at, at what points do you want people to kind of give feedback or thoughts or? Um, so like, who, um, I don't know, I guess just like, stop me if you're, if you, if I'm going too fast, like, uh, I guess, yeah, just like what you just did, just, okay. like, hey. Fair enough. Okay. So just, I want to encourage everybody to say, you know, yeah, yeah. jump in. Yeah, definitely. This is what we need. We we want people to tell us, like, hey, I don't like your website. Or, like, hey, well, what's your up with that? Like, we want people to tell us, like, what it is. Because really, like, this is, like, the most stressful part about, like, doing this. Like, personally, I can tell you, like, I feel like I am, like, uh, like, like a superhuman now. Like, I know something, but... Like, I feel like nobody else knows it because it's, like, so simple, so easy. Like, but everybody, there's still people out here, like, hurting themselves and, like, I don't know, it's just, it's crazy. So, like, what we want to, uh, what, I, what we want to figure out I'm, is, like, how to get the point or how to get all this that we've learned across so you guys kind of understand it so you guys could go through what we went through and, like, I don't know, just kind of like that. Um, so, yeah, so... Please give us feedback. Okay, and then back to the website. Uh, so this is the story. So we have different size stories. So when you click a story up here, and then different size stories. This is the this, this is the story of what it is we've done, what what is going on. We have a short like short version, which is the first thing that pops up. You can get like a mid sized version, and if you click that right there. A lot, a lot of things that we have right here, like linked up. Okay, so like, and then it gives you like a medium version, or you could get the longer version, and then after that would be the actual book. Um, yeah, and then right here on the right, it'll tell you a couple of things. So sometimes, so like we have links. This is like literally like a Wikipedia of like all of the stuff that we've gone through and learned. So like there there will be links and some of them will take you like away from the website so you'll have to like come back. So that's what this over here tells you like hey heads up. 
And this right here on the right, as I'm scrolling down, all these little videos are like videos of the when we first started, of like what the whole detail, like the notice, stream connect, do kind of what we first started off with. And like if you click any of these, it'll show you what they think it is. And then down here below all those videos, uh, we have like a mashup of all these people talking and a video of that. And, yeah, which which one is that? The mashup. The, the mashup right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you see got it? it. Got it. So it's the link. Got it. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. So yeah, and then a story. The BU book is under. You see right there, like a story, because I told you about the long size and then the BU book. And then so, when you come to the BU, you go. Were you gonna say something? Yeah, can I, can I ask you, and Nikhil, you, you've just um, published a book, um, like what it's like having a book as and a website, and you know what I'm saying, like what can you, what can you do with a book that you can't do with a website, and, and vice versa, or have you thought about that? Like he heard you, Nikhil. Yeah, sorry, I can't. I'm. Say that again. I was asking you because you've just published a book. Yeah. And, and we just looked at a couple of pages on a website that is then taking us to. I guess it's an online book. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And so I was asking about what a website affords and what a book affords. Like, what does it allow for what does it encourage the reader to understand in different ways how do you how does one get your message out better than another yeah um, I mean the way the redefined school page is set up I think it's it's very easy to navigate in the sense that you could you could take like short clips you could learn about videos you can read articles it's really very interactive um, a book is a very interactive I think the purpose of a book mostly is um, to get your message out to more of an audience at times. A website can definitely go viral, um, but it it may not necessarily have as much of an impact, I think. Um, but it all depends on the situation. I think um, if you're looking for something, a low-cost, quick way to get your message out, a website, an ebook, something of that nature could really go a long way. Uh, where a book could take many months on time, you have to redefine it, continuous to ed continuously edit it, um, could be more of a hassle for you. I'd like to add something there if I can. Um, and if I didn't get on this take, I want to add it too, that Nikhil's the one that really suggested that we kind of make something more shareable. Um, now this is going to sound re really selfish, but it's important to stamina maybe. Um, if nothing else, this whole process, and this is now again Will Richardson's do it sit for yourself first, this whole process has made me really determine that I am doing what matters most to me and that's making me get up every day and do what matters most again. Um, so the, the, the site and the book that's online and then the book that we're hoping to print out, what it's done for me personally is it's been so hard to pin this down because it's not definable because it's different for everyone. Um, and it's so simple that most, especially academics, aren't going to buy it because it's too simple to, to take in. Um, but it's also very complex underneath. So what, what it's afforded me is the site is a place now that we have like maybe 350 pages. None of them are posts, so there, it is kind of like Wikipedia, it's invisible. If, if you want to, you can travel down a rabbit hole link and find it. Um, Christian will show you more ways to find them. But, um, so the site helped me to not have to put as much on the online book, and both of those helped me and us to not have to put as much on the book that then gets printed. It, it's kind of a, a writing process of, and now I'm hearing Jason Fried in my head, you know, getting rid of the stuff that doesn't matter and rewriting, just going on a blank slate again and rewriting it, it again. So that's just my little take on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Christian, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, like um, what I could say for sure is that uh, some people like to read uh, books and uh, some people like websites. So like it's good to have a book for that, that type of audience, you know, like uh, people that want 
to just like they want that book in their hands and they want to I don't know that kind of stuff or a kid who's like more into like that technology kind of thing that wants a website or a, so I don't know just like you can like disperse around in a website like I guess there's like different audiences so that's like the plus of like having a book and the website and other things like that Kristen, can you can you just jump to the um, like the people and show? We wanted we keep for four years. We've been people have been saying define it, define it, and it's like we can't. And so we wanted once we were going to clean it up, we wanted it to still remain messy, um, just to show that interconnectedness. And um, so if I don't see the screen share anymore, um, but if you can pull up the people page and show them how we're trying to show that. There's the site allows for you to see what the web shows us. Now I'm thinking David Weinberger's book, um, Too Big to Know, and that there is no in a network there is no foundation, you know. So um, are you guys seeing the screen share? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. I wonder why I'm not. There we go. So welcome through this, Christian. Okay. So yeah. So. I guess this is our people page, and like, um, this is like, this is, there's so many people that are a part that have helped, and some of them don't even know, but like, there's so many people that have helped us, like, with our whole process, and we can't really, like, there's, hun there's hundreds of people that we could add to this collage of people, but yeah, these are like people that are a part of the, or were, and are a part of the, we live and helped us to get where we are now. And so like, I don't know, so we're experimenting and like, I don't know, this is like, a grid, hold up, I don't know what's going on. Click on, if, if you click on the grid of people. Should, should I click on the whole? Yeah, click on the grid of people. Yeah, okay, it's okay, so it's right here. All right. So if you click on the grid of people, where, where it was early, hold up. It's loading. It takes you to this, and like these are all the people, and they're like, like I said, there's more people that we can add. And when you do this, scroll all the way down to like everybody loads up, or else like it doesn't work correctly. But yeah, so like scroll down and like these are all the people that like have helped us. And there's, hold on, let me let me load everybody up so I can show you what it's gonna do. It's also is kind of modeling the app we're trying to create. You know, we do yeah. have some tech savvy, but not enough. And so we tried to do this just all on the site. So this is taking you to a, a blogger site because they have a new um, uh, okay, cool. sharing tool that's called Tiles. Okay, cool. So right here, if you like hit label, and then it'll label all the people that we have and like these are the contact people the I guess kinda people that you can talk to that are currently like deeply involved in all this that we're doing but like these are all our advisor global people our advisor lo local people that help us out and just like the lab global is like right there and I don't know just, just everybody that that is has been a part of the lab in some way is all right here just showing the like the fact that there's and we're like all interconnected is really cool and crazy. So why don't um, you what happened? Um, why don't you show them the grokking? Tell them what the sentence means, and then show them the grokking. Again, showing this web. How do you show? Because even online, to me, that's linear. You know, so that's yeah. been a frustration. It's too clean. So I'm online is web. linear. It's it's a, uh, books are linear too, though, right? Or? Definitely. Oh, okay. I mean, it's just it. Both are. Yeah. yeah it's, okay. Okay, so yeah. like right here on the web, grokking. Well, grokking is like doing something um, to the point where it's like uh, something you love. Wait, what is it? Oh, Kirill, my God. Did I miss that? Kiriev, who has Instagram. Taught us the word, and I know it's an old word, but we just didn't know it. So grok means to understand something so much that you become it. 
So that became our tagline. It's a story about people grokking what matters. And we started saying, well, maybe what matters most is people figuring out what matters most. And so if you grok that, you'd be living it every day. So on the grokking page, go ahead there, yeah. Christian. So on the grokking page right here, like you, this is a way for, for you to search through everything that we have, like specifics. So like let's say that, um, that you wanted to find out or like learn about what we've been working on lately, and it's the find inside Sierra. out. Find Sierra. So you or t yeah, t t tell the inside out. That's fine. Yeah. So like we've been doing an inside out project that Jr. did, and like we've been posting pictures of fa like fa people's faces on like we posted two the other day, and so like right here it says inside out project. So it like searches by the letter. When you're when you search it down there, and it's like first it gives you words with that start with the letter I, then it gives you people, and with like their names. Um, I is like a weird letter, so there's not a lot of people here. But like, so like if you pick a different letter, you'd have more. But like right here, you hit Inside Out Project, and it'll link you to what we've done and what we did with like these are like the posters that that we got printed out and like we posted some of the pictures whoa <laughs> that's my Instagram picture um, we posted we posted these pictures in downtown in Loveland and like you could see there Sierra and Barry both really cool people and this is like JR's TED of what like why we why we're doing it and the whole project that that he did, and like this is another video of, of him talking and like his project starting in 2004 and like I don't know, this is all like videos of him and like the updates that Jr. has come up with, and yeah, so this is the, our whole inside out thing. So like you can search through our website by just going to Grok and under Grokking once you click it. Um, it should load, and then it'll give you a bunch of letters. You can do that, and like, if you know where you're searching for, what word you're searching for, you just like click it, and it's kind of like a glossary. Or if you're like into more of the search thing, there's a search bar right here, and you can search the same thing. And search, search connected it, learning. Okay. Because we are trying to update it with the latest stuff as well, and not just telling what we're doing here locally. So Connected Learning just came out with some pretty incredible research. And so we've tried to gather, you know, link to each person um, and share that. It's it's all about and, I guess. Um, so when, the only thing that... Yeah, okay. Uh, wait. So the only thing that when you search it, um, it ge it brings up anything with the word that you search, and there will be probably like a bunch of different things with the words. So, when you search, uh, can you guys hear me still? Yep. yep. And we're watching what you're doing. What? Am I frozen? Uh, no, but you will be soon. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Keep going, Am I Christian. Frozen or not? No, you're good still. Okay. Okay. Uh, cool. cool. So, like, when you search connected learning, um, it'll give you like, okay, now I'm frozen. We can still hear you. Uh, You're off screen share. Cool. Uh, cool. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, okay. So. As you're bringing that back, could we go around and get yeah. some other voices in here and see what That's other people are idea. thinking? Um, who'd like to jump in? Yeah. With your thoughts. Okay. My, I had a thought when we were talking about books versus websites. And, um, you, know, you said that both of them seem linear, and a book is even static. You can't change it once it's printed, but it's a medium that a lot of people are most familiar with, and they can read it on the train and read it in their house and pass it on to somebody else. So even though it's old school school, it's, it's still something that I think you'd still need to do it. 
Yeah, you can I mean, touch it and feel it and smell it. I think that's important. Yeah, and a, a lot of people, that's, that's where they're at. We have to meet them where they are. I think another thing that maybe goes without saying here, too, is that the interesting thing is this is a book in 2013. 20 years ago, you guys wouldn't have been able to write a book that found an audience, right? Because you need to go through publishing houses. You have upfront capital in which you have to actually produce the book and market the book. I think the the idea of a book is changing beyond the multimedia aspects of what a book looks like. I think the process of how a book gets produced is almost as important here too. Um, you know, besides the fact that they're iterative, they're collaborative, they can change. You know, a site can change; it can move rapidly. Um, but I think that process is exciting uh, for um, also sort of as a measure of sort of like cohesion, right? So as you guys are producing this book. It brings you together on a point. You sort of generate some ideas about it. You go back out, do your respective things, come back, produce some part of the books, go back and leave. So I think it's it, it, it the process is exciting. Karen, you have any thoughts, feedback, ideas? I think you know books and websites have a lot of connections now and. You know, you have a book, you want to have a website with it, but a lot of, I mean, people will read a book that won't go to a website, but then maybe get pulled into the website. So it's a way to make a book more interactive, but I think there's a lot of merit to doing both for yourself as well as for people who are going to be reading or viewing. Yeah, I don't think we can open up the book on the screen share, and obviously we don't even have the screen share right now, but... Um, there's a ton of links in the online book. Um, we'll just have the QR codes in the, the printout book, but they do link to the you know pages in the site, which again made it so easy that made us feel like we didn't have to write as much. You know, I love that you could take five paragraphs and put it in one word, and so it looks like you're reading less. And you can travel down that road if you choose to. It's not forced into the understanding. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm interested in, in what you said about your process, too, though. That writing the book has, has helped you kind of, I don't know, decide what it all means or make it concrete in some way. You didn't, that, those weren't your words, but. I think anytime you, you know, you swim in something, um, the stuff that matters floats to the top more. Um, and the fact that a lot of it, could be difficult, like when Christian started and he said, what we found out 100% that we're not crazy. That was hard to get to that point because we are in a world today where um, we're all bowing down to, I mean, Nikhil could totally speak on this, we're bowing down to things that if we would just start talking to ourselves every day, we would realize that that's the crazy thing, you know. So, um, so having something that you keep working on and tell the stuff that keeps floating to the top matters and it was the stuff that you thought mattered anyway is very reaffirming. So I've told this before, so it's, but you know, for 20 years I taught what, how to rationalize a denominator and I'm applauded for that because that's what we do. Um, and I would talk about dreams and things and feel silly. And now I'm saying let's set people free, which sounds ridiculous, but it's the most rational thing I've done in 50 years, you know. So, um, yeah, the process has really made us feel like this is, this is, this matters. Well, but so, so, so have you, have you put that sentence, let's set people free, both in a book and on a website and do they read differently? So now you're just Kelsey. asking about the, the difference well, between a book and a website? No, no, I'm not really. I'm, I'm more interested in, in the, in the, in the sentence. <laughs> I mean, what does it mean to set people free? Like if I read that in, yeah, I don't, no, I'm not. Our, our definition, our, what we've found would work today is creating spaces of permission where people have nothing to prove. We, we compare it to a turtle. A turtle without a shell could die. Um, so we can't just say turtle, free yourself, you know. Um, we feel like public education, the institution, not started with ill intent, but 
over the years has made us so efficient that we're we're zombies and we don't have our turtle shells. And so it's like learning is a natural state. Um, and we all of this stuff like this site and trying to do the curiosity app, those are all temporal things until we get back to the natural state. That's why we're calling it detox. Um, mm -hmm. So setting people free is simply creating spaces where they have nothing to prove. That's that's one of the big findings in the four years is this proof thing. And that's one of the pages that um, I hope a lot of people will want to see. That's one of our frequently asked questions. How are we going to prove things? How are we going to credential things? Well, that's that's our biggest problem is who said we had to? Who said anything is provable? You know, if, if everything's changing every second, yeah, it might be provable this second, but 10 minutes from now. So um, setting people free is creating spaces of permission where people have nothing. I feel like we need to redefine public education. That's where a lot of people are held up in those spaces where it's all about proof. Mm -hmm. Kelsey, you were shaking your head earlier. Sorry. But go ahead. I was thinking about like how you asked if the sentence would read differently in a book than in a website, and I think it does. I think it would work well in both, but in a book, it kind of spark a little bit of a thought process, but it's just kind of someone reaching out there and wanting you to do something on your own, and you're kind of separated, but in a website, you can start the collaboration, talk to everyone else. It Instead of starting thoughts, it starts action. Hmm. That's interesting. And, um, Christian, add, go ahead. Yeah, I'll add that. Um, what's cool also about a website is like while you're reading, um, you can go off, make a new tab, and you know, go more, like get deeper into whatever it is you're thinking. Whatever it is you're like, everything, whatever it is you're reading and springing about. Because I know, like, I'll be reading sometimes, uh, like, different articles, and I'll like pull up a new tab just to research, like, like if I find something really cool, or like, if I find a cool video. I don't know, like, stuff like that. Like, the fact that, like, that is something that you can do on a website that you can't really do on a book. But I get, you know, so I guess that's not the case. Yeah, I, I, I want to kind of get off this sort of uh, media question and because, I mean, I'm, my intention in bringing it up was, was to try to, to elicit a little more about the content of what you guys are talking about um, in some way. I, I yeah, think um, a problem I've had is once you define something, it's kind of dead, and I don't think that's how we should be, you know. I think that's, Ellen Langer wrote a book called Mindfulness Decreases, decreases as Discrimination Increases. Um, Milo Merchant just had a TED Talk called Onlyness. And they're all talking about labels. And when we label things, that's when we get prejudice. And when we label things, that's when we decide people are disabled or whatever, you know. So if there's no standards and there's no labels, so I had trouble, I have trouble with words. I mean, I don't want to say it's a word because you might have an assumption about it. And I mean, so you're, you're right. Um, it's like the book version that is printed out that's dead now because you can't really change that. I mean, it can be an ongoing conversation. That needs to be the thing that you think is going to last, you know. Um, the site, we have updates daily on the site. Um, some of them are really cool, but some of them a lot of people won't, won't be interested in you know so it it is it's like or even site. see them right i mean they yeah. won't even notice them yeah, yeah right yeah. the site is yeah. like this huge I'm, again i use wikipedia as a comparison it's like we have no idea what's all under there and as we're reading we, we search something and we've come up with george black and as we're reading about george black if something intrigues us or we don't understand it the word might be highlighted and we can go on this little trail down you know so it's kind of like the site is a massive amount of things, but it's never everything. Um, and then the the, the ebook can interact more. It links to those places, you know. Mm -hmm. And we can update the ebook, you know. We can change it. 
and then the printed version, it better be the stuff that you really, you know, the more concise stuff that you really want to share. And I know Nikhil, if he was here, he'd be saying that because I know he went through that process writing his book, you know, several drafts and asking a whole bunch of people to read through them and, you know, making sure it's what you want to say because it's, you're not going to change that after it's out. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? People? Well, I mean, I, I think there's, you know, one of the things that we've been really trying to wrestle with in St. Louis is how to make serendipity a system, right? So on a website, when you're searching through and, and exploring new topics and learning as you go, there's a sort of just-in-time nature of what you're reading. Um, and it's serendipitous because you don't know where it's taking you. Um, you know, we're currently building a... Um, a platform for the students that are learning to write website code um, and at the beginning I think I learned pretty quickly that I had absolutely no idea what they were doing on the pilot project is them writing code at home um, and part of me wanted to say you know what no pressure I don't want to exert any authority on you so I'm I, I don't want this to be like school so I'm gonna just check in from time to time um, which I did a disservice to them because I really wasn't being a coach at all. I was sort of enabling them not to ship anything. Um, so I think for us now, we want to be able to place um, some kind of a structure to the type of, of learning that happens in real life, the type of stuff that's more authentic, rather than just sort of letting the cards fall where they may. Um, but it's a really, really hard process because the serendipity of, I think, what BU is, um, is more authentic to the way that people's natural thought pat patterns sort of flow, and the brainstorming aspect, and the, the jazzy iterations, um, and riffing exists, and it's really, really important. Um, and I, I think we've been wrestling with this very question, and really don't know how to answer it yet. The word purpose comes to mind. Like I, I, I'm wondering if you imagine. So, Gregory, what you were just talking about there, the students who you're imagining giving them more structure. I think you were saying in some way. There was a purpose t for doing that. Um, so that when somebody goes to the B the B lab or the BU website, like, do you imagine what that person, that what the user's purpose is in being there? And does that help structure what you're doing? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Nikhil really did walk us through a lot of this. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people did at other times. The timing was just right. Um, like Christian mm -hmm. said, a lot of kids just need to be set free. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, all of us just need to be set free and talk to ourselves until we talk ourselves out of following the map or the rules that we think we have to have. Um, so the site really isn't that significant. Um, however, people want to know how we got places or how do you know that's, you know, where did you learn that or what are you doing? One of the big, big questions is um, how do you define success? Um, and so now it's an easier way to just give a link to people. So we really don't, I don't think people are just going to go, oh, there's this site. It's, it's not a, like a platform or anything. It's just, it's a resource place. Because um, we do believe the future platform is in people's heads. And now it's all and. So we're trying to model that andness on the site. Um, the flavors of success. Um, at, right after it describes standardization um, and how do how do we then redefine success we've done the same thing as the people grid and just have minute snippets of a kid teaching game design a kid that just wrote an opera a kid that just skipped for the first time um, somebody that's just hugging somebody just to show the eclecticness of our definitions of success because that's one of the mind things we need to detox ourselves from I mean if, if we didn't think success was getting in places getting a GED or a diploma or a degree to get in places it's a whole new ballgame um, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So the site is more for for people who are stuck in it. You know, if people are, and actually with talking with Nicole, it is to actually try to change the law. You know, he what he said is he's talking all over the place. You know, he's got a big microphone right now. Because um, of the book, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, because of the book and what he's done, but he's saying, you know, what what we're doing isn't as shareable, you know. So the site is really more for if somebody wants to say, you know, they're doing this or this is this is this is the redefinition or this is how they would do this. Um, so I don't think it's a necessity for anybody. Uh, along the right hand side are um, yeah. the Notice Dream Connect Do and the Detox. So if people felt like they needed, I don't even know how to be myself. Um, that's there, but mm -hmm. so I'm hearing. So I'm hearing the purpose of the site is is in some way to uh, invite people to take the journey with you. Like here's here's the journey we've been on. You know, you, maybe you want to do it too. Is that which is no small thing, but yeah. Or just to tell our story, you know, it, uh, well. life is about stories. This is this is our story. We're saying it's nothing special, um, but if we want to have equity in the world, and for people to be able to do, um, Sierra's going to be at Harvard next week. Um, she's doing. Uh, they're showing a screening of a PBS special that'll come out in April, um, and it's called "Is School Enough." Um, She's been able to do some amazing things, but it's not equitable. I mean, we could list people all over that are doing amazing things. It's not equi equitable until everybody has charge of their day, you know. And right now, we don't have charge of our day. Maybe after 3 o'clock we do if we don't have too much other stuff. So um, it's, it's our story of the vision we have of redefining public education. But let, let me take Nikhil's question, though, and, and say, how could that be? I, I love the idea of being of saying that's what people need, being in charge of their day. But how can that become a policy issue? Um, well, the, on the very first page, mm -hmm. each district has maybe 500-plus policies right now. Um, charter schools come in, and they may opt out of half of those. But at least in our district, you have to replace them every one of them. So no wonder we get nothing done. Um, so we're saying beg all the policy and all, in, in order for you to get government funding, um, you just need to make sure that everyone's known by someone and everyone talks to themselves every day. That's the policy. Um, not mm -hmm. seat time, not grades. Can I say something? Yeah, I, but let's uh, let's make this final comment so as we go around. Um, and I know we lost time on the tech side here, but we need to respect how late it's getting. Go ahead, Christian. Yeah. Hey, um, I, I guess these are just my comments and just like things that I'm noticing. And I, I don't know. I just feel like I should I should get this out there. Um, a few things that like always stick to my head. When I'm like after I've learned all this and been through all this, is like these are a few of the big things. Half the stuff like that, um, half the jobs that we're gonna as as us kids that we're studying for or whatever like we're doing are like there's gonna be new jobs in the future like that we have not even discovered yet, like jobs that are like gonna be up and coming because the world is gonna be like so like it's gonna change it's gonna evolve and like I feel like that that was what I heard that once and it was like a big thing I, I can't really explain it but like the fact that we're studying for something that we don't know what to study for or like like that was a big thing and also like a big problem that I see when people are trying to understand what we're doing is that they ask like questions that like because they're scared I'm not scared but like they feel like, uh, I don't know, they, they ask too many questions that aren't really, like, um, necessary. I guess, I feel like to really understand this and to really get it, like, all you have to worry about is, are you happy with what you're doing? Are you, like, waking up every day and, like, 
hey, I'm like, this is this is my like, hey, let's go. This is my date. Let's go. Like, like just be like being happy. It seems so crazy. Like, like just be happy. But like, I mean, truly happy. Fall in love with who you are, what you're doing, and like, just like I don't know. I don't know. It's that's. I, I feel like just being is so simple, and we like overlook it by so many things. Like, well, what are the numbers? Uh, how, what are you gonna get out of it? Uh, no, just are you happy? Are you cool with what you're doing? Are you having fun? Cool. Keep on doing it. Um, like I, I feel like that's another thing, and like there is really no path like there is no map I can draw you to how to be happy I can tell you how I, I, how I became from going from a big jerk uh, that liked to get into a lot of fights and I don't know just like always mad to now like super happy and like chill and like kind of the complete opposite I can tell you my story I can tell you what I've been through I can tell you a bunch of things that'll make you go, wow, whoa, whoa, wait. But like, they'll, they won't be like, what, that's not gonna help you do your thing. What you like, what's gonna help you do your thing is you do your thing. Like, you go out there and figure out who you are. Find out what it is, who, what is your purpose in this life. Like, it's so short. I don't know why we waste so much time, like, doing something that we don't like. But yeah. Yep. I guess those are just my little comments. Your little comments. Uh, Christian, over the years, you've become quite an articulate spokesman here. That was uh, very clearly stated. So congratulations on, on <laughs> Thank on you. That. It helps us all think. Thank you. Um, we should uh, click in and see if anybody else has some final thoughts. So Gregory, do you have any? Yeah, just continuously inspired by the work that uh, the lab is doing. Um, I think as we, as an organization in St. Louis, continue to evolve and understand exactly what we're doing as a community, um, it's exciting and helpful that the lab is tackling these same questions. Um, I think what better purpose to define a public education system than around happiness. Um, so as the lab and Monica and Christian and everyone continues to do the work, um, just having a site like this to poke around for five minutes rather mm -hmm. than spending five minutes in my RSS feed and probably reading something about how we can improve or innovate within a school. Um, I'd rather spend five minutes as sort of like an RSS feed of happiness um, by just poking around the site and see what happens. Um, it stretches my thinking more. It also allows me to think that uh, um, this whole working directly with students and teachers thing is going to pay off in the long run. Um, it's sort of a long con, but I think uh, seeing this exist and seeing it grow and seeing it change um, personally helps me do what I'm doing in St. Louis, but I think an aggregate as a sort of broader community of redefiners, I guess you would say, um, it's, it's neat. So I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it and continuously hear the updates. Thank you for joining us again. Um, Karen. Um, I really enjoyed tonight and hearing these ideas, and I think these are really, really important ideas that more people need to hear, and I think a book is a really strong platform. You know, it doesn't do everything a website does, but I think it's very worthwhile for yourself as a process, but also it's just a huge platform to get to get your ideas out to more people. So, thank you. Mm. Go ahead, Monica. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, I guess hope that it tickled people enough to maybe delve into it a little bit. Um, we have, even though we're not real crystal clear on it, um, we are really crystal clear on how to go about down to the how you would spend an hour each day on the site. So. Um, Send us questions if you want to know more. Or just search away. Thanks for the time, Paul. No, repeat that again, though. You, um, is that anywhere on the site? Like, how how might I spend an hour on the site each day? Oh no, you know the the two the two main things. Everyone's known by someone, and you talk to yourself uh -huh. every day. If you click on those, the very front page, you click on everyone's known by someone. 
talks mm-hmm. about how you would spend an hour each day to to pacify the policyholders so we can say okay now they get funding because they are doing this one hour a day and how we would exactly spend our time the talking to yourself talking into this app curiosity app so you can connect to people and hasten the amount of time between you found the thing that matters and now you're with your people um, so it's all it's, it's pretty detailed <laughs> on the site so very cool Maybe thanks for can. thanks for showing us and I, I hope I'll go play around there I'm going um, I like I Gregory I like your idea of, of you know just spending time and, and seeing what we find there that's a great idea Scott you have any final thoughts here we lost yeah. your daughter but yeah it was it had to go it was bedtime but yeah. Um, yeah I've enjoyed watching what Monica has been doing out there in the in the evolution of the whole thing and I Glad to see this next step and it's you know reaching out to the world. It's it's, it's fun to watch about what you're doing. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. And uh, Karen, thank you for recording for us tonight. Um, and um, I you know I hope I hope we all hear that Google had a glitch and it's not just uh, us. But anyway, somehow we weren't able to record tonight. If honestly, if you do hear something, uh, let me know. Um, and uh, we can try to figure out what went wrong here tonight with recording, but um, hopefully we'll have it up. Thank you for doing that, Karen. We also want to thank Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo um, at edtechtalk.com and worldbridges.net. And eventually this will get up on teacherteacher.org and on those two sites that we just mentioned. Um, Disruption, uh, where, where, where can we find your site, Gregory? Or f- follow your work a little more. You can find us on our newly launched new site, which I'll okay. put up in the um, comments here. Um, and then also sort of in the shameless tell comments. Tell us too, because somebody might be listening. Sure. It's yeah. the disruption, like a disruption, D-I-S-R-U-P-T-I-O-N, <laughs> department.org. Um, Another thing that I might point people to, being that we're around nine days left in a deadline for fundraising for our student fellowship program, um, on there you can donate to our Fundly campaign. Um, We're having hack days once a month for our six student fellows, and we're also financing internet at their house. Um, So any um, cent or 10 cents or 25 cents up to and including $20 $20 million would be helpful. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I, I did notice that, and I'm glad we got it in here. Um, yes. Again. Great. Thank you. So thank you all, and we'll catch up with you next week. All right. Thanks. Take care.